Welcome to today's Global Connections program. I'm Bill Miller. How important is it to preserve the lifeblood of South America, namely the Amazon River and the Amazon rainforest? My guest today is involved in an organization that's working to achieve that goal. My guest today is Ms. Sarah DuPont. Sarah DuPont is the president and founder of the Amazon Aid Foundation. Uh, Ms. DuPont is an award-winning humanitarian, educator, and filmmaker, and is a vital advocate of ecological preservation. Sarah DuPont, welcome to today's Global Connections program. Thank you, Bill, for having me here. I appreciate you being with me today. Let's jump right into it. The Amazon Aid Foundation, uh, when was it formed? Why was it formed? Well, my adventures in the Amazon started in 1999 when I started to go down to the Peruvian Amazon with a bunch of highly regarded scientists. And I learned through this, their scientific lens the importance of the Amazon and the implications of its destruction, both locally and globally. And I also realized that a lot of their information wasn't getting out to the global public. And I consider myself an educator. So I thought, hmm, what am I gonna do? I thought, well, I think I'm gonna start the Amazon Aid Foundation to be that bridge between the scientists and the global audiences so they too can understand the importance of the Amazon and what we need to do to protect it. Mm -hmm. And our viewers can go to your website, amazonaid.org, and get more information. I was looking at your website, which is very interesting, and looking at your board of directors, which is also a very interesting group of people. You have a sissy spacek, the SpaceX, who is a very famous actress. Uh, what, what is her involvement with, with the uh, board and with what you're trying to do in the Amazon? So Sissy and I have been friends for over 30 years. We live in Charlottesville, Virginia, and we raised our kids together, and she's just a very dear, wonderful, smart, talented person. And as being a really good friend, she knew uh, of my efforts in the Amazon. And when I decided to start Amazon Aid, she was one of the first person I invited to sit on our board. And she has been critical in helping me create media. So what we do at Amazon Aid is we, we make films, short films, longer films. And she was a great asset in giving me advice. I had never made a film in my entire life until I was almost 50 years old. <laughs> and she advised me um, from nuts and bolts of what to do. Making films, are, it's not an easy process, as you probably know. It, it certainly is, and you certainly had a great professional <laughs> working with you on that. Yes, That's she's sure. very helpful, and she also uh, narrates my film, River of Gold, mm -hmm. which is gonna be released in the next couple months. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a great entree. That's a good segue right into it. This is one of your major activities. It's a documentary film, The River of Gold. What uh, is the main theme of it, and why did you do this particular okay. documentary film? So when I first went down to the Amazon in 1999, as I was saying, uh, it was the largest contiguous piece of rainforest left on the planet. And in 2001, after 9-11, uh, the prices of gold shot up to, to from $250 an ounce to almost $1,800 an ounce. Mm -hmm. And people uh, came to this area of the Amazon and started to mine for gold. And it's one of the most devastating practices that you can have in the Amazon. It's mm -hmm. deforestation on, on steroids because they use mercury in the process. So being a witness and not knowing what else to do, and understanding the power of film, I decided to make, my, actually my first film was Amazon Gold, and now the new film, updated film, is River of Gold. Very good, and we just happened to have the trailer for River of Gold, and we're going to go to it and take a look at it, and come back and talk about it in just a moment. first glance, it's almost like looking at the Grand Canyon in America, but then when you actually start to really understand what you're looking at, it hits you even harder. Everybody's affected because the Amazon has such an important environmental impact. We're at that moment where if we are not acting, 
the scale goes in another direction. This is critical moment, you know, more than ever in history. The Amazon is at a real crossroads. It's very close to a tipping point. Gold mining is one of the underlying things that's destroying this enormous rainforest. It's like the Wild West. The government launched an operation last year to destroy dredgers. Peruvian police raid an illegal mining operation. Rising global demand for gold has also fueled demand for a far less prized metal, mercury. Mercury from small-scale mines travels widely, moving up the food chain into fish and humans. Probably more than 100 police here, and they're bringing the fight to the miners. They've come in helicopter because it's just too far to get to you by foot. Many miners are determined to fight. In March, three died while protesting against the new laws. The price of gold reached an all-time high this month, surpassing $1,800 an ounce. $1,800. Illegal gold mining is a $2.9 billion industry, moving more money than drug trafficking. As long as the global price of gold remains high, this activity will continue. Sarah, that was a really interesting documentary film. That really fantastic job. Look forward to see the, seeing the entire <laughs> film at, in, in the not too distant future. What? How do you plan to distribute this? How how can you make this available to people? Are you trying to get it into schools? Are you trying to get it on the airwaves or the TV stations or whatever to to show people the devastation that's taking place? Well, we are uh, still in the process of talking about where it's going to be released. We know that it's going to be, uh, the film was actually made to go into schools. It was made to create curriculum around it. And we've made, we've been working with Journeys in Film, which produces curriculum around films. They did the film Hidden Figures. They've done a lot of uh, films for National Geographic and they create uh, curriculum. So the main objective is to get it into schools and uh, Amazon AIDS, our, our focus is on the youth because we wanna empower them and give them a voice so they can be part of their future because the Amazon's in big trouble and we need the youth to understand what's at stake and what's at stake for their future. So um, we'll still, like in the next couple of months, we're, we're finalizing what we're, we're, we're doing with the release of the film. Mm -hmm. This is so critical, and as you mentioned, gold prices shot up, and mm -hmm. of course, anytime you're going to make money, people are going to do these things, but this, as they mine the, the river, the Amazon River, you, there's all kinds of, there are all kinds of negative repercussions from doing this. It's just not a matter of running a pan through the river and right. pulling out gold, but you have all kinds of contamination. You have mercury contamination, mm -hmm. different things like that. How deadly is that, not only to the Amazon, the, the inhabitants, the fish and whatever in the, the river, but also people downriver who may drink this stuff or use it for, for the cattle or whatever the case might be. Exactly, so uh, illegal mining in the Amazon, is, is, as, as mentioned, is one of the most devastating uh, practices that you can do because they use mercury in the process. Mercury is an element. It's one of the most toxic ele elements that, that you can put into the system. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, 76% of all people tested in the area where we shot our film have three to 33 times above toxic levels of mercury in their system. And a lot of the mercury is, is from the fish that they eat. Mm -hmm. um, and most people really don't even have any idea of the fish, that the fish is loaded with mercury and they're starting to try to educate people about, about what fish to, to eat and what not to eat. But it's a very, very serious issue and, and mercury can stay in a system for 
some people say as long as 10,000 years. So uh, this type of mining, it's small scale mining, is, is in 80 countries, around 80 countries, and it's responsible for being the number one release of mercury on the planet. So we're talking about a very, very serious issue. Most people have no idea where their gold comes from. They certainly don't, mm -hmm. that's, that's very, very true. The, what, what have you found as far as uh, some of the other threats that are tied into this as far as the, when they're doing this mining or illegal mm -hmm. mining or whatever the case might be uh, as to some of the other negative spin-offs from it? So unfortunately mm -hmm. with environmental degradation comes human degradation. Mm -hmm. And um, with this illegal mining practice now, you've got the mafia, you've got narcotic trafficking. It's a $3 billion a year illegal mm -hmm. activity in Peru alone. You have child slavery, human trafficking, mercury poisoning, uh, eradication of species, destruction of these incredible primary forests that um, will take centuries to grow back. It's a very, it's a devastating issue. It certainly is. And while you were making this film, you were, I'm sure, not a very popular person <laughs> in that no. area of the world. No. Because when you're, in, uh, when people see that their livelihood's gonna be threatened or whatever, it may be, be a legal livelihood, but uh, did you ever feel threatened or did you have anyone who made menacing overtures towards you or anything like that? Well, it was super scary. Mm -hmm. We were the first people inside the mines to film and, um, I think that we were fortunate to get out without getting hurt because there were so many of us. And um, mm -hmm. in fact, we were told to uh, wear, wear some sort of costume, like I was saying, oh, wear a baseball cap and you know, dress like the locals. And I certainly don't look like the locals. <laughs> but we, we, uh, we got in and we were able to stay in one camp for about two days and they came and escorted us out and it was, very scary. The the people that actually took us in were the ch people that took the ch child slaves They out of the camps. They were the only people brave enough to bring us in there. And they were terrified. I've been in a lot of really scary places in my life and I always watch my guides. And if the guides get scared, I pay really good attention. Well, they were terrified. But, um, oh, by the grace of God, go us. We got in and out and got footage that um, people were surprised that we got. Well, you're watching Global Connections Television, which is a privately funded, independently produced program. The opinions expressed on Global Connections are solely those of the moderator and his guest. We would invite our viewers to go to our website at www.globalconnectionstelevision to view previous programs. Also, if you're involved with the PBS or Community Access Television Station, or perhaps an educational institution that has an intra-campus television hookup, or you just have a website and you like our shows and would like to share them, please do so. Global Connections Television is provided free of charge as a public service to help us better understand international issues and how they impact our lives. Today we're taking a look at the Amazon Basin, the Amazon Rainforest, the Amazon River, and of course we've heard for many, many years that the Amazon really is the, they're the lungs of the earth and for, for very obvious reasons. And my guest today is an expert on this particular topic. My guest today is Ms. Sarah DuPont. Sarah DuPont is an award-winning humanitarian educator and filmmaker, and she is a vocal advocate of ecological preservation. She is also the president and founder of Amazon Aid Foundation. Sarah, we're talking about uh, really a risky film, a risky arrangement to, to document a very important activity that's underway. How did you get into these areas? Uh, you went into some of these mines, and how did you get in there? Did, they didn't try to stop you when you came in? They just let you in? They let us in, and uh, okay. when <laughs> there was one mining camp called Waipetwe where we knew people had never gotten in before, mm -hmm. and we stopped with our, our two trucks that we were with, with and had a discussion about what was gonna happen when we actually tried to go in, mm -hmm. whether we would find violence or not. And we were all, it was, there was a lot of anxiety. It was ex extremely intense and we just drove in and the whole town stopped and looked at us. And I do think part of it is that there were so many of us that mm -hmm. they, don't, they couldn't take us all out at once. And there was another time where we went into this really, really dangerous area called Lamal 
and the team went in on motorcycles in the dead of night. I actually did not go on that part of it because as being one of the only women, I didn't, I was worried that I would be a target and mm -hmm. that I would compromise the team. So they went in and it was, it was super scary. When you see the film, you'll see this footage. It's just traumatic and it's really intense and scary and um, we got in and out. Got in and out, thank goodness. Yes, <laughs> you made yes, it, that's, yes. that's very true. Well, as we look at that area of the world, and as I mentioned earlier, the Amazon is often called the rainforest, it's called the lungs of the earth. How, how important is it for us to remember that? So often we see that they're leveling trees down there, they're trying to raise cattle and plant crops, mm -hmm. which is a losing proposition because of the leaching that happens when the torrential rains come in and just exactly. wash Erosion. away all the nutrients. Right. But how important is it, for, for, is it for us to focus attention on the Amazon basin and to try to, to help preserve it because the planet Earth can depend upon it, can it not? Well, right, without the Amazon, mm -hmm. we're in trouble. And um, so the Amazon is, is in a very important system in many ways in that it's one of the most important land ecosystem for mitigating climate change. It, hold ele it holds 11 years of global carbon and emissions and one sixth of all the carbon on the planet. So there are more trees in the Amazon than there are stars in the Milky Way, which is pretty amazing to think of. And that carbon is held in the tree's trunks and branches and leaves and roots. And it's there, there and they pull in the toxic levels of carbon and release the oxygen, 20% of the oxygen that we, we, we breathe. So they're super important that they take, you know, as climate change rolls out, we put more carbon in the atmosphere, the Amazon actually pulls it in. So we don't wanna cut down those trees and burn them, burn them because it goes back into the atmosphere. In actuality, 30% of all global carbon emissions are from dur burning trees. So we're actually killing the very things that, we're pr uh, that are protecting us. Another really important function of the Amazon that a lot of people forget is the hydrological cycle. So the Amazon actually makes its own rainfall. It pulls moisture off the Atlantic Ocean and it recycles three times before it hits the wall of the Andes. If you go over the other side of the Andes, it's, it's actually a desert. Mm -hmm. So it's very, the way it's, the topography is really, really interesting. Every day that the 20 billion tons of water is put into the atmosphere by the Amazon. Super, super important. That moisture, it goes into the air and seeds the clouds that go around the world. So if you cut down the Amazon, um, the world will dry up. Um, we need 80% of the trees. You know, this is an experiment. We're not really sure, but they're saying that by modeling that they need 80% of the trees standing to continue that hydrological cycle. And we're now at 81%. So it's really at the tipping point. People need to be aware and be proactive in protecting it. Mm -hmm. And you're absolutely right. If you go to the western side of the Andes, you go to Atacama Desert in Chile or wherever it might be. It's desert. Desert. <laughs> it's fascinating, really. Zero rain. Yeah, it's <laughs> you know, fascinating. Maybe you get a few drops every right. year or two. Because it's like all the, the, the Andes is keeping it all right exactly. there in the that's basin. Right. It, that's very, very true. What, what can we do? I know the United Nations is working through the UN Environment Program, mm -hmm. through their climate change conferences, what have you, to mobilize private sector people, UN agencies, governments, non-governmental organizations. But what can we do to try to assist you with your work and to uh, the other people can be involved in other groups too to to try to overcome these problems right so it needs like a teams it needs the un mm -hmm. it needs you know countries we need mm -hmm. to have govern governance in in uh, the amazonia countries people need to be aware mm -hmm. of the amazon and be proactive we need to keep the trees up um, and though in my humble opinion i think we need mm -hmm. to think of the amazon we need to think of the amazon as a system and 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 think of I always think of it as like city planning. There needs to be more planning on what mm -hmm. needs to stay up, we, where where do all the trees need to exist? Because um, we need to have a certain amount of trees to keep it all functioning. And that you know the biodiversity in itself. We didn't even talk about that, but you know thirty over thirty percent of all the species on the planet are in the Amazon. So it's um, 
really important. I think support people on the ground that are trying to protect the Amazon. It's very difficult work. Lots of external pressures. Um, letting people know of the Amazon. When I tell people that I work in the Amazon, they think it's Amazon.com. <laughs> right. So I think people have no idea what's at stake and to protect the forest, you know, help fund the protection of the forest, it's really expensive to, to keep forest standing, mm -hmm. unfortunately. And of course, our viewers can go to your website, AmazonAid.org. You're a 501c3 group. That's so correct. So they can donate to you if they would like. It yep, we need all the help we can get. It, it is certainly a mutual effort. There's no doubt about it. You were talking about the uh, diversity within the Amazon. As I recall, too, many of the medicines that we use today, the indigenous peoples who have lived there discovered this right. long time ago right. that the, the places like the Amazon, the rainforest there, or maybe in Indonesia or Barneo or wherever it might be, that so many of the really life-saving drugs come out of that area. But as we level this area, and I saw a statistic, and I can't, it's, it's devastating regardless if I'm right or wrong, but it's like every second or every minute, I can't remember which, an area the size of a football field is leveled in the mm -hmm. Amazon rainforest. That is frightening. When you think of 60, I'll just say a minute, to, I can't be wrong there, and uh, 60, football fields every hour. That is yeah. absolutely, it's, it's devastating, but how important is it to go back to the pharmaceutical <laughs> item and to focus attention on that? Well, there are plenty of, the, there's a lot of pharmaceuticals that have come from, mm -hmm. derived from plants in the Amazon. There has not l lately been as much coming out as, as we would like, but you know, there's, there's so many species there, so many that have already that, that we don't even know about yet. Every three days, a new species is found in the Amazon. And the sad part about it is that the Amazon's gonna be destroyed before we even find out where, what these species are. It's very sad. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and you know, biodiversity is really important. We need to have diver diversity um, and the uh, large library of DNA mm -hmm. that, that, that exists on, our, on this planet. Now, you're focused on the Amazon Basin primarily, but mm -hmm. you're concerned about the whole world, I'm sure. Yes. But as you look forward, uh, what, what do you see as the major challenge that we have as far as helping to preserve the Amazon rainforest, the river, and to deal with climate change? <clears throat> oh, my gosh, there's so many obstacles. <laughs> and we only have a minute left. Yeah, the hardest well, really? Oh, yeah, there's so many obstacles. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I have to say that there's many, many organizations, people that are working on protecting it. And, and I think with the UN and the, the, the COP, uh, the UN Cl uh, Climate Change Conference, people are becoming more aware of what is at stake and corporations and individuals and governments are starting to step forward to protect the most valuable, our, our planet. We, we need to do that now. But you're absolutely right. We do. We absolutely have to focus attention on this, and we need to make people aware of the problem and to have them be involved with groups such as yours to follow what the UN's doing with their mm -hmm. climate conferences. Mm -hmm. And of course, the big one was in 2015, the Paris Climate right. Agreement, and that uh, has the potential to really help us try to move a little faster in dealing with uh, climate problems. But it's something that we have to work on together because if we don't. There is no planet B, there's no... Exactly, uh, as, it's uh, a global for, issue. It is certainly a global issue, and as uh, former uh, Secretary General of the UN, uh, Ban Ki-moon said, there, there's no backup plan, there's no, no planet B, and if we lose this planet, we're in deep trouble. Yeah. And the rate we're going, we're, we're losing the battle to a large degree. We see that the glaciers are disappearing. We're talking about the Andes. There are indigenous peoples in the Andes that are losing their glaciers. They won't have drinking water within 20 or 30 years. So what are these people going to do? They're going to be climate change refugees. But I want to thank you for focusing you, the Bill. spotlight on this particular issue because it's one that we do not hear about enough. But Sarah DuPont, I want to thank you so much for it's a, a pleasure, very Bill. interesting thank you very and much. a very informative Enjoyed program. It. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Bill Miller. Thank you for joining us today on Global Connections Television.